she's like, but I love the lyrics and I love your voice. Can you sit at the piano and play a song? And so I sat at the piano and played a song that I'd written by myself in, the, in that apartment, you know? Mm-hmm. And she was like, let's do this thing. I want to sign you. And I was just like, I'm okay. I'm having a little bit of whiplash. Here. Bring it back I don't know. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm Adam, by the way, and this is about you and your journey in music. And we'll talk about your new EP as well. Cool. I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so first off, uh, you're wearing the sweatshirt, but you're born and raised in Detroit. Is that what I read? Yes. <laughs> Talk to me about that. Um, I grew up there. Uh, my dad was from there. My mom was from Ohio. Pretty boring, but um, my dad was in the car industry. Okay. And, uh, I love cars, all American, especially American muscle. I probably noticed the cover of the EP. Yes. Um, on an American car. Uh, but yeah, it was a great, it was a great childhood. I mean, it was pretty cold for most of the year, mm-hmm. but we spent, spent the summers at the lake. Um, and I miss it. But that's, that's really cool. So your dad was in the car industry then? Yeah. Yep. Very, very cool. So were you just constantly surrounded by, you know, muscle cars and, and cause I know it's a, obviously a huge industry in Detroit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's how De- Detroit was pretty much formed I guess it was like their main industry when it was sure sure which is really sad now that it's not but um yeah I mean obviously we have like the Woodward cruise and stuff have you heard of that it's every summer where pretty much mm-hmm. everyone who lives in Detroit area seems to have especially like the older you know generation seems to have um some sort of older car in their garage okay and like for a weekend in the summer, they all come out and Woodward is like the main strip of road mm-hmm. like through Detroit to all the suburbs and stuff and everyone mm-hmm. takes them out. It's just a big party. That's awesome. My neighbor across the street, uh, he's from Illinois, but he's big in the car. He works for Ford and he's got like, it just reminds me of him. Like he's got this old uh, Mustang that's like in his front yard that he's constantly yeah. working on. Yeah, no, it's like every single person in Michigan, they're like, I'm working on my car again. Like they're they love it. I don't know why I used the country accent there in East Michigan. But. Yeah, sure. But do you, like, growing up, does, does your dad, like, work on cars? Like, is it something that you were taught, like, a skill set growing up? Uh, not as much. I mean, I know everything about cars because, God forbid, I ask a stupid question. Um, <laughs> but, like, if, you know, like an oil change or something. But um, they'll be like, Eloise, are you serious? But uh, he was more, he made the engine blocks. Oh, so, cool more like the the parts that go into the car instead of the entire car itself sure sure so i know a lot about engines which that's is, awesome that's really cool what a cool skill to have yeah like who needs that information but <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you're going all, here as a girl in california where all the engines are um electric oh, right i was gonna say <laughs> sure well what about music anyone in your house an artist musical no, but we had uh so we used to have a grand piano like in the foyer or whatever they're called. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean it was I think it's for looks. Um and then But I nobody started... played it? No, I mean my mom used to How good. Um my mom used to play and mm-hmm. then, um she ended up putting it in the basement once I once I started trying to play, um, uh, because I was learning at the time and she was like <laughs> Um, she didn't want to listen to you learn <laughs> no because i've have you ever heard someone learn how to play the piano and then once I started, yeah once i started writing she was like okay enough immediately enough like because when you're writing a song it's the same thing over and over and over again so she made she moved you down to the to the basement yes okay and how old were you when you started learning piano um i'd say i was in like the sixth grade okay yeah. Other than the piano being there, was there something that drew you to wanting to learn how to play it? I had always loved singing my whole okay. life. And um, I was a huge karaoke singer. I had on my little oh. karaoke machines. And um, my mom said to me, she was like, okay, enough of the karaoke. Uh, if you would like to be a singer, you're going to have to learn how to play an instrument. And I was like, good thing we got that big old piano. Uh-huh in the foyer however you say it I say foyer um but she was like oh god and so then I started learning on that and that's when I got moved to the basement like by professional piano movers 
Uh, oh, uh, really? <laughs> like, we're hiring somebody to get this thing out of here. Yeah, like, literally, like, immediately. Um, I would just hear it from all over the house, Ellie, stop. And I'd just be mid piano and be like, okay, sorry. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, it's cool that, that you continued on, you know, minus like, yeah. Instead of being discouraged, you're like, oh, I'm going to go down. I'll just go down to the, the basement and I'll do it. Whatever. Yeah, well, that's end up, that, that was where I wrote most of my songs. I loved the basement. It, was, it ended up becoming like my music room. Mm -hmm. And the basement itself was like unfinished. Like it wasn't like a cute basement. Um, it was pretty creepy down there. Mm -hmm. But then there's this ginormous, beautiful grand piano, like in the scariest looking basement. And I was like, we're going to we're gonna trip it out down here. So um, but the reason that they were always yelling at me is I have a lot of siblings and okay. everyone's doing their homework and parents are working. It's after school. And I'm like banging on the piano. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm trying to do my math facts and I'm like, I'm trying to learn piano. How, uh, I mean, how many siblings do you have? Um, I have two brothers. So we're all two years apart from the next one. So a brother under me and then another brother, sorry. And then a little sister. Okay, so four, and you're like the middle ish. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And so you have a bunch of, you have other siblings in the house that are trying to do schoolwork, and you're downstairs playing the piano. So your parents are like, okay, we're going to move you downstairs. Um, at, at what point do you start writing songs? Is it pretty early? I mean, you said you're writing, when you're writing songs, your mom's like, okay, you know, I don't want to hear the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, I, I mean, I started writing my freshman year of high school. That was okay. when, um, I really, I think it was just filled with a lot of emotions during going through puberty. That's when mm -hmm. I'm a flood of um, emotions. I think that's just like the only word for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I write like these like nine minute songs. And I was like, who do I think I am? Led Zeppelin? <laughs> Who's going to sit through this with a, you know, 14 year old? What does she have to say? But I had a lot to say, I guess. Um, There's like, I mean, the choruses themselves were four minutes. So, wow. Yeah. Those they, are like epic ballads. They were just stories with music behind them. Um, were you were, always a writer? Like, were you always writing? It sounds like you, that was a way you were able to, you know, yeah, therapeutically a, get your emotions out. Yeah, I was a pretty emotional kid. I My family is not emotional at all. Like, they're all pretty, like, hard ass. They're all hard asses. Like, okay. they're very, like strong people they you know lots of armor you know, I don't mm -hmm. know that I mean it's brothers and then my little sister's like a, a tomboy and I was just like really soft sweet like um scared child <laughs> just like everything made me nervous I was very protective and just like careful and then I had like these crazy brothers and my mom was just like a firecracker like she's super fun down for anything and then my dad you know was working all the time and I was I was so filled with so many different emotions and um, so many feelings. And they just looked at me like a <laughs> crazy creature. They're like, what is wrong with this girl? Um, and so over the years, I just held a lot of it in because I was like, okay, we're not supposed to show, you know, how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, music be ended up becoming an outlet for it because, you know, when you hold in a lot of feelings, they bottle up and then, sure. oh, so it ended up becoming a great outlet. Just like, I think a lot of, Creatives. Mm -hmm. So you started writing songs, you said in freshman year, like when were you to the point where you were comfortable showing people your songs or was there a moment that you wrote something really, you, that you were really proud of and you're like, oh, I'm going to show this to blah, 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 or I'm going to play this live or. Yeah. So I, um, I started this charity in, um, in high school called Teens for Arts and pretty much like there's this um, program in downtown Detroit called Mosaic and mm -hmm. it, it was you can have pretty much what they, they have um, scholarships for kids to be able to do like, it's like, mu it's a music program mm -hmm. and the scholar and to be in this music program, I guess it's kind of expensive. And we raise money for scholarships so that anyone can be able to do this music program in downtown Detroit because of, you know, there's a huge issue with just homelessness and stuff like that, but there's so many talented kids. And I was like, how is it fair that all of us are taking piano lessons and taking guitar lessons and you know going to school and doing all this. This is so stupid. That's not fair at all. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, started this charity, but we put on this huge event and we would play music with the mosaic kids. We put on a show with them pretty much at like oh wow 
at like the country club in our area. Um, and we'd invite all the parents and make them bring out their checkbooks for the for us cute little kids playing them in show. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know what we were doing. And uh, we'd have it catered, obviously. When we're children, we can just be like, no, what's this? Right, right. Um, we ended up raising a million dollars over the four years. Oh and, man, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was crazy. I think it's what got me into college for sure because my ACT score was a joke. Um, but I think it was like a 17, which I don't think it gets much lower than that. <laughs> I can't remember. To be I put on my calculator, which I'm pretty sure you need for like the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like trying to do the math on like paper. I'm just, like, like, uh... I'm like, excuse me. I think I need a calculator. He's like, yeah, you should have brought that. I was like, okay. <laughs> I get a guess. Um, I was like, I'm not trying to go to college anyway, but, um, anyways, I had, I had played a song at one of these charity events, long story short, and uh, all of the other parents that were there and stuff were like, Wendy, did you know, my mom's name's Wendy, did you know your daughter wrote songs? She was like, yes, they were, and you know, they, they had, it had gotten some good feedback. So from there, and that just gave me the confidence to keep doing mm -hmm. it. I think sometimes you just need, for at least for me, I need like a little gold star on my forehead. To like yeah, keep yeah validation that you're doing what yeah. you should be doing, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And uh so I just kept doing it. And then, so this is about, this is my end of my sophomore year of high school or junior. That's junior. impressive to start a, a, like a charity like that. What was, you just had this idea, like, you know what, we should be able to provide lessons for anyone. And then you just reached out to some people and got this charity going. Yeah. I mean, so it's incredible. I had played sports, but it uh -huh. um, wasn't for me. And I didn't have any extracurriculars then. I just went and played music in my basement every day after school. And I finished my homework in school every day because I wasn't paying attention in the other classes. So like I'd get homework in first period and then the second period I'd do that homework. So anyway, sure. but, uh, <laughs> it's actually priorities. Really, it's, actually, it's actually really smart. But by the time I'd get home, I'd have no homework. Mm -hmm. And so I really prioritized my music and it made it, I didn't, I mean, I didn't find school too hard. ACT was a little harder, but um, I had a lot of free time and mm -hmm. I, I absolutely have truly always loved music, like not in a cheesy way, but I just have always loved it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I like, it didn't feel like work, if that makes sense. Like I just, I wanted to have meetings with people. I felt those were the things that like got me going, not school and like field hockey games and all the other mm -hmm. stuff that we're just like obsessed with. I just did, didn't do the same for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I, there were some seniors when I was a sophomore that we were friends that I was friends with and they were also in music and, and in our, in our area, like at least where I grew up, like there's not a ton of creatives. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, everyone goes to college. There's like maybe one kid from every school that goes to a music school or something, you know? So we all kind of came together and started this together and we had chairs for every, you know, like the decorations committee and all that. Stuff. Wow. That's, then, wow, that's really, really impressive. Yeah, we, we just met every Sunday, but also like it was fun because I went to an all girls school. So of course I had boys. Um, okay, boys. yeah. You know, so it was, there were snacks and it was fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Wow, okay. And then you end up attending college in Detroit or did you move out I, of state or I not did, go to college? <laughs> I, I didn't go to college. Um, I did get into USC, which I, I just- Wow. Did. A little bragging moment. I think it was that's it was huge. It wasn't for my ACT scores, that's for sure. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, I grew up in Southern California, and I, I could not get into that school. I could tell you that much. I well, I don't know why I got in. Um, true, probably because you raised a million bucks in four years with a nonprofit I mean, that you started. I think maybe. it helped. I think that definitely helped. <laughs> I remember sitting with my mom. It was like a birthday treat my dad got us to like go get a spot treatment when we were on spring, my senior spring break because mm -hmm. I didn't go off to junior. and I'm sitting there and I'm like why do all my emails say congratulations USC student I'm like that's so weird they put that like on an email when they haven't told you yet if you got in my mom's like you can't are you stupid and I'm just like should I have gotten into this school <laughs> you know and I'm like that's just really weird that they would do that <laughs> She's like, you dumbass, go into your email right now. And I saw it and I was just like, oh my God, I got in. 
And then like a week later, I was like, do you guys care if I don't go to college? <laughs> so I didn't go. Your dad looks at the price. He's like, yeah, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> my dad didn't go to college. My mom was like, cool. And they're like, no girl, you do you. Like as long as, as girl, so what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to move to Nashville. And okay. Like, wow. Okay. They're like, all right. Do you want to tell us more? <laughs> I'm and sorry. you just decided. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to Nashville. I love songwriting and music, and that's where it's where it's happening. Yeah. Is that I, the idea? Yeah, I had such an appreciation for songwriting. And at the time, like I knew nothing about LA. I'd been here once. And it just seemed really scary at the time. Like it, it's still to me it's scary. Like it's large, you know, mm-hmm. just, like, figuring out the whole place is so crazy. And um I I had been to Nashville like three times since so I was like, okay, that place. You know, I'm familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Nashville. I've been to Broadway. I have snuck into cities with my mom and my aunt. <laughs> um, and so I went to Nashville and I thought I had an internship lined up. Turns out it was totally bullshit. Um, <sighs> I didn't tell my parents that when I got there. And it was just a big old mess when I got there at first, but still didn't tell them. I was like, hey, we're going to just finesse our way through this. And, um, I ended up staying, I, st- I told him I was just going to try it for a year. So I deferred USC for a year so I could still go back the next year. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna, because I went, I was going to USC for business, music business. Okay. So I wasn't going to be an artist. I was like giving that up to go to college. I guess I just, I didn't think it was a thing, you know, like, I was like, how do you go to college and be an artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you it, it, music business is well, not only it works if you're an artist too, but like, yeah, obviously, like, okay, this may be lucrative to me if I finish <laughs> instead of like, I was like, how do I future plan while like, and I was just like, I don't. It's so weird when you're 17 to like yeah. decide like, oh, your life. Yeah, and like pick a college based on like such a weird, like wanting to be an artist. I'm like, I don't think you need it. I don't think for me what I'm doing. But anyway. It just depends on what you're doing and what your path is. But I was like, I feel like if I go there, then I'm going to end up getting a job and, and I'm going to miss out on something I really want to try. So mm-hmm. I told my parents one year in Nashville, I was like, I just want to try being an artist for one year. Six years later, <laughs> <laughs> all my college fund is eaten up um, after the four years because, you know, I was delivering hot wings in Brentwood, Tennessee. There you go. I I live in Nashville now, or in oh, south by yeah, around where you just mentioned. So have you heard of Jefferson's? Uh, I haven't. I've only been here for like a little over a year. Oh, welcome. I oh, mean, thank I you. <laughs> but you were there for six years, so <laughs> you could say welcome. I can say welcome, welcome to LA because I'm from Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh... So you're working at this, at this place and what, just like for, for the six years you're there, are you just trying to meet people, uh, you know, get in these writers rounds, like try to get a publishing, like what was your experience those first few years in Nashville? And like, how are you trying to like kind of navigate what you're trying to do? My first few years, like I look back and I'm like, wow, how traumatic. <laughs> just like, so I'm living in this house with this producer who's, which is it's a long story not really a producer. I don't really know what's happening, but. But he's got a laptop with garage band on. He's got a laptop. <laughs> so he's a producer. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm starting to hear some of my songs um, with his, vo- his voice on them. And I'm oh. like, this is weird things are happening. And I'm like, and then it was just, it was a mess, but like, we're not salty about it anymore. We've forgiven, we've moved on. Um, but anyways, I move out into this apartment. I'm 18 now still a baby and I feel so bad because I'm like I'm so stupid but looking back I'm like you were like I was still a kid you know Mm -hmm. and um there was no internship he didn't produce one of my songs when I got there and then I um I moved into this apartment all by myself in a weird area because I didn't know where I was still it was only my first three months there I uh I still did tell my parents that I had stuff lined up, even though I didn't. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really difficult to be in Nashville when you're not 21 because everyone my age is in, co- in college. And so I'm not going to be making friends with, like to me or to them, I'm weird. Like, why am I living? Like, what am I doing to them? You know, like mm-hmm. 
they weren't trying to hang out with me. They're in their sorority stuff. They're doing their things, you know? And then everyone who's older is like, why is this like 12 year old living in an apartment by herself? You know? And like, like she can't come out with us, you know? Cause everyone there is like a heavy drinker. And right. so um, I spent like two and a half years by myself in this apartment and you know, I think it was character building. Um, sure. You probably wrote a lot of songs. I did. And one of the songs will actually uh, hopefully be released at some point. Um, wow. I ended up writing by myself called Last Night's Dress. I started it in the chapel at my high school and then reworked it when I lived in that apartment by myself. And it's so cool to watch it like evolve. Anyways. Um, That's so but, awesome. Yeah. So it's like a little piece of me through the years. But um I, this is a funny story. I, um, I got bored like a lot in this apartment and have you been to Pinewood Social or heard of it? Mm -hmm. Uh, the place is a bowling alley. I kind of lived in the apartments above it. Okay. On Rolling Mill Hill. And yeah, I actually just went there recently. That's a cool spot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So my dad had bought me like a bunch of booze. <laughs> He's a supporter. Um, filled my cabinets with them when he helped me move into this little apartment. Uh -huh. and um from Costco and so I poured myself a nice big old glass of white wine because I didn't know about mixing alcohol at this point and um I walked down to Pinewood Social and this was my little trick I would do this every weekend and I would sit at the bar and I would get like a mocktail like I'd mm -hmm. get like a in a short crystal glass I'd ask for like a soda with lime and like a splash of crayon or something that just looked like a cocktail right right and then I would go to the hostess and I'd say like, can I get a table like for one? And she'd be like, yes. And so she would sit me at a table for one and then I'd have a waiter and I'd be like, can I get another? And you'd be like, what is it? And I'd say like, you know, like two vodka, whatever I was drinking. Oh, <laughs> that's brilliant. It's brilliant. And everyone who works at Pinewood Social is a songwriter. Uh huh. And my waiter, his name was Devin. He was a songwriter and I ended up writing with him for like years. And really I, I was like do you want to write sometime which is the cringiest thing to say to someone but i'm just like getting drunk by myself every saturday at pinewood social eating broccoli uh because that's one of their best dishes and um being like hey you want to write sometime and they're like how old are you and i'm just like you're like obviously 21 <laughs> you did bring me this drink and then we keep writing and at some point i'm like yeah so like when i graduated high school last year he's like what i'm like what <laughs> wait what you're like i meant college <laughs> <laughs> like i meant college i meant my masters or whatever they're called um anyway so that was a funny story but that is funny that, that's the hustle like i i was like everyone no one's gonna write with like mm -hmm. everyone who has a publishing deal is not gonna write with me you know mm -hmm. like who is this like truly like and also when you're a young girl who like doesn't know anyone it's just it's hard to be taken seriously and you just have to you have to move your way through but also everyone there wants the exact same thing so it's really hard to set yourself apart now it's just like it made me realize how much I wanted it because I looking back I'm like how did I do that because me now I'm not saying I'd get discouraged but I'm like that's a that's a lot of work to put in yeah <laughs> For, it's a grind I mean to do that for six years like there, uh, what happened to where you're like, oh, like you something, there must have been some sort of milestone moment that you were like, okay, I need to stay here. Like this happened. So this is working. And then obviously you get to LA and like, how does, you know, what was the, the, the path between that? Um, so I had a lawyer, his name's Jeff Colvin, cause I had, I got an advice from, um, a studio engineer there that I need a lawyer like that's the first thing you have to do so I get a lawyer named Jeff Colvin and he told me because I was like what do I do next like my parents are on my ass they are asking me what I'm doing every day and I'm just like I'm writing even though I'm writing like at this point with other people maybe twice a month because it's so hard to find rights right yeah have people making your rights and um he's like I would get songs recorded with a professional producer that are your sound, find your best ones, and I'll send them to publishing companies. So wow. I used the rest of my college money 
which is a lot and get it's expensive to get stuff recorded like it's so much easier when you have a company to like and being an independent artist is that's why I was working at Jefferson's mm -hmm. and which I mean those were dark times like <laughs> I smelled like onion rings for like months <laughs> um, Sorry. It wasn't for me I made no money and anyways um I should have worked at like a clothing store but I I was doing everything I could. And anyways, I record these six songs. Mm -hmm. I send them to my lawyer. I don't hear back for like five months. I mean, my parents are calling me every single day because they're helping me with my rent. They're helping me with groceries. Like I'm, they're like, what is happening? I'm like, mm -hmm. they're getting ready to move me home and I'm going to work in my mom's store. And I'm like, oh my God, this has gone so poorly. Like this was the worst decision ever. Like I, all my friends are about to graduate like a, a year and a half from college, mm -hmm. like all this time has passed. I've totally screwed up and um, no one replied. Like, I guess no publishing companies replied. Turns out he, I guess, I don't, I don't know if he ever did send the stuff. I think there was like a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. um, I reach out again. He, he does send the email. And that same day, Carla from Big Yellow Dog was like, I want to meet with her right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that worked. <laughs> a week before my parents were going to move me back. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah. And I am in like an Amazon dress in Converse. And because my car has broken down. And so I, I have to get like an Uber there. And I get to this meeting. I walk in and she's like, I love Carla. She is funny. If you, if you ever meet her or know more about her, this mm -hmm. is just her personality. She, she found Megan Trainer and Maren Morris. So she is a publisher, but she's also like, she finds artists. Like stars, yeah. And I was really hesitant towards a publishing deal. Cause I was like, okay, like now I'm gonna spend all my time writing for other people, you know, not to mm -hmm. be like picky at this point, but like, <laughs> <laughs> cause I don't really have for that. But um, anyways, I walk in and she's like, who are you again? You know, like, I don't remember your music because that's kind of her personality. And I was like, um, I'm Eloise. And she's kind of joking. Like she kind of sees how you react. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. She can vibe you out. You're like, yeah. Oh, and, uh, and, I, <laughs> and I'm as cool as a cucumber because I'm just like, at this point, this mu the music industry so far has just, this is not, you know, <laughs> been. Um, the and, nicest, sure. And she, we play one of the songs that I had spent all that money on recording. And she's like, I hate it. I hate the production. The production sucks. I'm like, oh, that's good. This is going like, well. <laughs> okay. She's like, but I love the lyrics and I love your voice. Can you sit at the piano and play a song? And so I sat at the piano and played a song that I'd written by myself in, the, in that apartment, you know? Mm -hmm. And she was like, let's do this thing. I want to sign you. And I was just like, I'm okay. I'm having a little bit of whiplash here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I walked out and, and she was like, I just like your thing. And I'm like, trauma, you know, like <laughs> just years of <laughs> and trauma. Trauma. And uh, I called my mom and she was like, oh God, we are going to move you home. And I'm like, okay. And, and then the pandemic hit. Oh man. So this happens <laughs> right before the pandemic? So it, yeah. And so by the time the signing finally yeah, yeah, yeah. goes through. Out, the pandemic hit and what, real quick what song was that song on either ep that you've released that you, the one you played for her yes the other side oh cool yeah um so then the pandemic hit and then my heart was broken i this is not a sob story this is just i'm just telling it in like there's no i love this is amazing I, I this is so yeah i love to hear this there's great things that happened to me in between but um <laughs> uh and then i write and then like a huge group of songs over Zoom. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then I put out like this little EP, Pete Gambard from Atlantic hears it. And we go into the studio with Dave Cobb, we record three songs. And then he was like, I wanna sign you. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, but it was over Zoom. And I literally was so shocked because when I was in high school, I used to wish every single day at 11.11, right before lunch, I was like, I wish for a record deal, I wish for a record deal, like every single day, because it was just all, I didn't even know what a record deal meant, I just knew that it was like, what, you're, like Hannah Montana, I think had one, like, right, like, you know? well, yeah, any artist <laughs> you probably knew at the time was all 
on yeah. a record company. Yeah. So it's just like, that's all I want to play. I want to just like, get me out of the school, get me out of here, get me out of Michigan. Um, and it was so wild because it was at my kitchen counter when I found out. And then I just like closed my laptop and I went to my workout class. <laughs> it was like so. And um, then it was 11 11 when it happened. No way. Oh, I thought cool. that's where you're going. Well, I was going to be like, <laughs> oh. Maybe some clickbait. Let's just say that it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, but that's insane. Wow. So, you get the, the deal over Zoom and then do you move at this point? Did you, the other side was done, right? That's what they heard? Yeah. So that he had record? Heard, he heard what I thought it was. And he was like, I, you know, like I had thought that people wanted to hear upbeat, fast, happy songs. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not that girl at all. And he heard what I thought it was and he loved it. And as I kept writing, I, you know, I would send these songs that I thought, you know, record A and R people wanted to hear. And he was like, I want to hear the songs that you wrote on the floor of your closet in your apartment. And I'm like, I have so many of those, you know? <laughs> sure. and, I'm like, and I'm also like, this is a match made in heaven, like that he actually wants this. He is he is the best. And um I will always speak very highly of him. He listens, we listen to each other. I have uh -huh. such respect for him. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't get to say that about their A&R at a label, you know, mm -hmm. but he just wants me to be me. And I also know that he knows everything that I don't about the industry. So it's a really great match. That's fantastic. So with Sad Bird, are these songs that you had from that time period with these songs that you wrote in, in your bedroom on the floor or at this now with this new record, you, is this all new stuff? All brand new, yeah. Okay, so tell me about putting together this new record and how different was that? Do you are you in a studio with with producers and in different people at this point in a, in a position that you weren't in, working at the restaurant and trying to write from this, you know, apartment? Yeah. So it did. Yeah, it did escalate a little bit. Okay. A lot of it was still over Zoom, but it, I'm writing with people I'm huge fans of. You know, I'm sure. Huge fans of like their work and you know trying not to be too much of a fangirl over zoom because it's like super awkward already i'm like okay so here's um here's what i'm going through <laughs> nice to meet mm -hmm. you also, <laughs> um but i i wrote uh four in the morning over zoom with someone in the uk that i'd never met uh, named jonathan cornby and i wrote um sad bird still sings over zoom while i was in zion because i was like i need to get out of this apartment if i'm about to write at first it was to write a whole record. I was just, I was going to write as many songs as possible. Uh -huh. um, but I, uh, I was just, I was so happy to be able to just make a body of work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was very cool. That is so cool. So the, most of it was written over zoom. And then what was your first, what was the first one that you ended up being able to write like in person with somebody? Um, seasons was okay. Daniel Tashi. We had, masks on and then the third person jay gosling was um over zoom drinking wow. wine it, what, he was in um the uk as well so it was like way later there mm -hmm. and morning for us <laughs> what a cool experience to you know see to, to have all these things kind of happen for you after it was like oh my gosh like my parents are gonna move me home and then you yeah, know, no, those I, two I'm victories gonna... I have an ulcer, uh, but it sounds like it's just constant stress, like underlying stress. But I, at the end of the day, I love sitting at my piano. It's my favorite part. So I just, um, it, it's, it, it all worked out. I mean, I love, I love doing it. So mm -hmm. it's better than, I guess, a cubicle for me. Cause I would, I would just be doodling the whole time. <laughs> selling onion rings. Literally. So <laughs> me. I don't think I got tipped one time. What? <laughs> wow, that's a, that's yeah, that's bad. I'm sorry. A good delivery girl. I must. I mean, no one's gonna believe that. I'm just considering tips. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Are you still? I would imagine. Are you still writing now? Just on? Do you have a piano at your house? Or you just go and and write on? Right around the corner. I'm I'm saving up for. It's like an uh, electric acoustic electric upright, but I'm saving up for a real upright. Amazing. Very, very cool. And have you had a chance to play your record out yet? Like, are you doing any live shows in, in, oh, yeah. in I, LA? I played, a show, I played a show last night, the night before. Oh. At Atlanta. Yeah, we're playing lots of shows. 
How's that going? It's going great. Um, last night was very cool. Uh, I'm playing like the, the whole EP and it, um, everyone seems to really love um, the song. So that makes me happy because that's a good sign. Yeah, it's a great record. I, I listened to it earlier today. Thank you. That, that means a lot because it's been a long time coming with these songs, but it's and it's hard to pluck when you write so many, you know, in such a long period of time from mm -hmm. 2020 to now it's like how do you pick six <laughs> right you know? yeah six and then yeah out of all of the all of the songs that you had been working on so, for so many years and then you wrote a bunch of new ones and then it's like what do i decide on here yeah. but having a label helps because they tell you which ones are the best so. <laughs> that works out <laughs> well eloise thank you so much for for doing this you have such an incredible story i appreciate your time thank you for listening to me my, I'm a chatty Kathy, so it's nice to have somewhere to have an outlet for that. Thank I you. I love it. I love it. Well, I have one more question. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Oh, yeah. Go for it. I mean, also, like, like surround yourself with it and work your ass off. Because if I've learned anything, like, people who, and I still have to work my ass off, like, even getting a record deal, I was like, okay, the work starts now because it's just more people to help you, but the work still comes from me because nothing works in, unless I'm working, you know? And I would just say, work your little tail feather off because if you really want it, it'll show and just be the best that you can be in your craft because everyone, unfortunately, everyone else wants it too, you know? But also don't try and be like anyone else because there's so many artists out there and what sets you apart is being different. I know that sounds so cliche, but just be, just be you. Bring me the bad word.